The Cata Babata by C.J. Gallette, illustrated by Mary Hatcher. Kakata Babata was not just your average noisy garden variety little bug. He was a happy and hardworking and respectful weather bug who took pride in his daily responsibilities. Thank you very much. Every morning he would wake up to the early to check the weather and sing the forecast to his neighbors. He would sing about what happened overnight, what currently happening, and what he would probably happen as the day went on. If the weather was ominous, like when a typhoon was passing through, or for example, Kakata Babata would not rest until everyone had been warned. He was devoted to his work and wanted to be dependable. There was nothing worse than failing your job. One day, after a turbulent storm, Kakata Babata woke up bright and early to sing his morning report. However, when Kakata Babata opened his mouth and tried to sing, his voice was gone. Kakata Babata was worried. Without his songs, how would the neighbors prepare for the weather? So Kakata Babata tried everything he could think of to get his voice back. He tried eating amaboshi, or salted sour plums, after his big brother had told him. He tried drinking hachima dolshulk, a beverage made from honey and picked radishes. Grandmother Baiba always made it for him when he was sick. It never failed to make him feel better. But this time, even after six delicious cups, his voice was still gone. He tried other cold remedies like shagawea, ginger tea, rice porridge, sake eggnog. Yet none of these remedies brought back his voice. Soon, Kakata Babata's neighbors started to get very nervous without his songs. They did not know what to prepare for the weather. That night, Kakata Babata dreamed of an old tale that his grandfather used to read to him. It told of the ancient onsen, or hot springs, that could heal all sicknesses. They were far, and to get there, a bug like Kakata Babata would have to risk his life. Only the bravest bugs ever dared to find it. The next morning, Kakata Babata woke up determined. Even though he was afraid, he just could not let his neighbors down. So he packed a light travel bag, downed his best yoka, and set out on a perilous, perilous journey to find the healing springs. He crossed the ancient river of doom, which his great-grandfather had described as having the angriest and most turbulent waters he had ever seen. He scaled the weeping mountains of fate, known to challenge even the strongest climbers. He braved the wind, wild winds of wonder, which almost ended in ruin when he misjudged just how strong and how fast the wind would blow and blow and blow. He even drank the sap from Grandmother Cayo's, the all-knowing tree, hoping to show an easier path to the onsen. But despite all her wisdom, an easier path could not be found. And although he was tired, Kakata Babata had to keep going. Early one morning, after he made his way through the dark bamboo forest. Kakata Babata arrived at the largest red Tory gate he had, could ever have imagined. It marked the entrance to a long winding staircase that twisted in turns through the mountains. After paying respects to his ancestors, Kakata Babata walked through the gate and began to climb. Step by step, Kakata Babata moved up the winding staircase. The air was hot and humid, and his, and soon his feet began to blister. Still, he kept climbing. He climbed so high that the ground beneath him changed from dirt to snow. As the sun fell asleep, the moon awoke from its slumber. Kakata Babata finally reached the top of the mountain. Kakata Babata could not believe his eyes. There in front of him was a scene that could only be described as magical and sacred. It was the most beautiful hot spring lined with Saqqara cherry blossoms and glittering rocks. While steaming hot, the water looked calm, peaceful, and inviting. 
In order not to anger the ancient spirits, Kakata Babata first took off his clothes and cleaned himself using a, his cloth and small wooden bucket of water. After all the dirt and grime from his travels had been washed away, he waded into the spring. He placed a small tunigi towel on top of his head and took extra care to make sure it did not touch the sacred water. He didn't want to upset the ancient spirits of the spring. The water was hot and it felt like silk as it covered his tired, injured body. The water smelled of earthy minerals and fresh flowers like lotus, hippocus, and saccara blossoms. He gazed up at the stars shining above him. He, could help, he couldn't help but feel at peace. He closed his eyes and let the healing water come up just below his chin. Kakata Babata almost jumped out of the spring with excitement. He made a sound. His great-grandfather had been right. This spring did heal all sicknesses. It wasn't just an old folk tale told to children before bed. Kakata Babata settled into the water again, a smile on his face. When his body felt nice and renewed, he set off his journey home. When Kakata Babata arrived home, he took off his dirty wooden shoes at the front door and buried his inside so he could tell his family and friends the good news. Then he ate a heartly meal and got ready for bed and set his alarm clock. He couldn't be late on his first day back to work. Kikata Babata woke up at dawn the very next day, just as he always had before, and began to report the weather. His neighbors were very happy to hear his sweet songs once more. When the day's work was done, Kekata Babata thought about how renewed he felt to trip in the hot spring and visited again. Time he'd go before he lost his voice. He was very busy and hardworking weather bug, and surely his neighbors would understand that he needed time to take care of himself every once in a while. From that moment forward, even if it felt like he couldn't spare time, Kekata Babama promised himself he would go back to the spring regularly. He had a job to do after all and he needed a healthy voice to do it. The end.